It's here. Gemini 2.5 can now use a browser. In today's video, we're going to go check it out. I'm going to show you how you can use it completely for free, how you can then integrate it into your own applications, and how you can actually run this on your own computer. So let's get into the video. So they're adding more stuff to this Gemini 2.5 family. When will they ever go to 3? Who knows? Well, anyway, so luckily for us, instead of reading all this entire stuff, we can actually just look at their AI-generated summary. Final AI coming to some good use. So they're releasing this computer use model via the API. You can actually use it online as well without having to go to the API. But we can also use the API and run this local as well. So I'll show you how to do that. Enabling developers to build agents that can interact with user interfaces. It outperforms others on the web and mobile control benchmarks with lower latency, which is what I've noticed as well. It is really fast. And you can access it now on Google AI Studio and Vertex to start building and share feedback, blah, blah, blah. So they've released it. Uh, the things online that I'm seeing are people are saying that it's more of a preview model, um, which you know I kind of agree with from what I've seen. If you want to see technically more how it works, you can obviously come here and check it out. Pause the video, read this. I'm not going to get too much into it. We're really just going to show you how it actually performs and then go and do the live demos and show you how to get this up and running. So, also, do you like this lighting? It's, uh, I'm in the kitchen, live from my kitchen and my son's kitchen. So, uh, the benchmarks here, as you can see, it outperforms Claude 4.5 and OpenAI Operator on every single benchmark. So, it's the new state-of-the-art browser use. Now, to go and use it, we can actually use this, blah, 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 da, 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 da. You can go and use it on browser base here, right? So browser base essentially is for, or it's like an infrastructure for browser use. So we have covered browser base before on the channel, but Gemini is now in browser base. Can you use it exactly straight in here, which is cool. So let's just click something and check it out. So play a game of 2048. It's like a little game where you slide stuff. Um, you'll see in a minute. So this is it here. I'll keep my head at the top. On the left-hand side here, we have the prompt, and then we have what it's going to do. So when it does stuff, it will say in here. We also have a screen that we can look at here, so we can actually watch it. And we can switch in and interact here as well. So let's see what it first does. So it calls this tool, open browser, then navigates, blah, blah, blah. Calls another tool to navigate. I must have got through that first cookies really fast. I mean, like that's 30 seconds, as you can see, and it's already starting to play play the game, which is pretty cool. So let's see if the scores go up. So there you go, yeah, it moves down. So, I mean, it is interacting with it, as you can see from here. Um, key combination, key combination. And so it's cool that you can kind of see this behind the scenes and actually interact with this without having to use code, which is what we'll look at in a minute. So, as you can see here, the tools that it's calling down, blah, blah, blah. So this is all doing this by essentially taking this kind of image of the screen, this representation, send it to the Gemini 2.5 computer use API, which then gives it the return value of what to do. And there you can go, see it's actually working. So that's pretty cool. Let me stop that. So um, task completed. Now, something you see here is in the top right, we can actually deploy this. If you click on deploy, it will take you to browserbase.com um, forward slash CUA forward slash Gemini. And from here, um, you can then deploy it. So you can actually deploy like your own. Essentially, Browserbase, what it is, is like infrastructure for creating browser agents. So when you want to create your own browser agents and you want to you know, amend it such to make it specialized at specific things or whatever your own brand, <laughs> white label it. Um, then browser base, you can use that. But if you want to run it locally, I'll show you how we can actually do this in a minute as well with uh, essentially no code as well. Um, you don't have to code it, but you can. So next, let's have a quick look at da -da 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 -da, how to run this locally. So to run it locally or to run it on your own computer, that the browser use or computer use, not actually how to run the model locally because you still need to use the API endpoint. You can come here to github.com and remember all of these links will be in the description below. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, computer use preview here. Um, and then you can just scroll down and you literally just copy and paste these 
And so copy that, paste it into terminal, copy that, paste it into terminal, same here. And then this one will show you how to get the API in a minute. And when I say copy into terminal, if you're proper, like don't know anything, um, just open up terminal and then it'll open up this here. Um, so let's create a new one just to show you what I'm talking about. So it comes up like this and then you just paste your commands in here. So you copy that, bam, paste it in here. Anyway, so once you get to here, you then need your API key to actually use this. So if we go to AI Studio and inside AI Studio, you can go to API keys here. And then for here, you literally just click create an API key, select a cloud project or create one if you don't have one. Um, and then just give it a name and boom, you've got your key and then you can copy it from here. Now, for reference, the 2.5, if you're going to use in the Gemini browser base, it's completely free. But if you're going to use the API endpoint yourself, like the way I'm, excuse me, the way I'm going to show you now, then you have to set up billing. So you need to set up a billing account, um, which just give it a credit card kind of thing. As for pricing... I was trying to look around and see. Now I found Skywork. We've done a video on Skywork, really good um, agentic AI platform. But they have a bunch of stuff here, including uh, docs like pricing, because I couldn't find it, honestly, for the life of me. Um, but I finally found it, I think. Wait to see if it loads up here. Um, and it's developer API pricing. Um, so we can see here Gemini 2.5 Pro, 2.5 Flash, Flash Preview, blah, blah, blah. But I can't see anything specifically for just the this uh, computer use. Oh, there we go. Hey, we found it. Boom, there we go. So there's the price in here. So a dollar twenty-five for these tokens, input price, or two fifty for more than two hundred thousand, and output price ten dollars for less than two hundred thousand. That's proper. Oh, that's so dear. I wonder how much I've spent. Um, but anyway, I have run this once, one query, which we'll show you in a minute, which is just me searching. I think it was like Hello World on Google. Um, and this here, let me refresh the page to make sure. But we'll see if it will tell us the amount of tokens. And that has taken 10,000 tokens just to basically say Hello World. Um, so what would, what would that come to in um, total cost? One penny. So it cost me one penny to do Hello Google, which actually, hey, that's not too bad. So anyway, come back here. You now have your API key. You want to just replace that part of it. So like copy here, go to your APIs, da 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 da, -da. Oh, paste that in. And then copy your API key like this, and then replace that But Copy the whole thing, and then paste it in here, which sounds complicated, but it's super easy. So once you have that bit set up, Next, you can actually just go now and run the tool. So you will now be running the Python file, the main Python file inside of the directory, given it a query. And this query is go to Google, type hello world into the search bar. So if we copy this here and head on over, that's what I had done here, and paste it in, I'll show you what it does. So it will pop up a Chromium tab. Now, Chromium is the open source version of Chrome which is created and, and managed by, by Google. But it's open source, meaning it is free um, to use. You can use it and fork it to make your own browser, etc. So you can think of the cool things you could try with this. If you fancy a challenge of making like a browser use AI built into it, etc. Kind of like Comet or something. Um, but anyway, so you have this part here. If we open back up Terminal, you can see what it tells us. So we had written this here, Python, blah, blah, blah. Gemini computer use reasoning tells you what function call it's going to do. Um, and then it tells you what it's, the reasoning is. So I've evaluated the screenshot, accept, blah, blah, blah. Then this here, arguments, blah, blah, blah. And it says, do you want to proceed? And just say yes. And then you can see that it clicks on it. We'll make this a bit smaller. There we go. We can see now, whoa, it's writing all by himself. Generate response. And it's gone. Oh, I'm going to need to blow the screen because it's now just got my messages everywhere. Um, so now this is the kind of thing that you need to keep an eye out for. So it completed its task. So now it's just cut itself out. So instead, let's go and we'll get the browser 
space this here. We'll copy that and we'll try and watch it run this live on my own computer. I also don't worry about all the stuff in the background. I know my desktop's a mess. Just do, don't worry yourself. So, we've sent that in. We'll see what it goes and does. It'd be cool actually through this if it gave you tokens instead. Um, but from here as well, we'll be able to see how fast this actually actually works. Um, and whilst this is starting up, um, let me see, was it waiting on something? Oh, it's because, ha 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 ha, it's because you need to do it as a query. So let me delete some of this. Da, 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 da. So python main.py query, paste the query in, boom. I think it's looking for an end quote. There we go. So it's opened this up. Let's see. I want it to kind of like automatically just resolve this without me having to do yes. So I wonder if it has some sort of YOLO mode. The way you get it with like Claude code. That'd be pretty cool. But anyway, generating a response. Hey, there we go. Sorry to hear in 248. Boom. Let's see if it will automatically consent to this. I'll be pretty impressed if it does. I think you can also, by the way, for reference, you can come in and click stuff. So, like, for captures and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because there we go, it's asking you. Now, this here, again, it'd be cool to fork this so that if you maybe get a capture or something like a consent screen, it doesn't have to take it and send the tokens up. It could be cheaper if it's just, like, gets you to do it yourself. Um, but there we go. We can see that it's playing it already on my, on my computer, which is amazing. Um... So one thing I do want to check is, so let's just cancel it, command C, boom. So one thing I do want to check now is it's called computer use. So I want to see if it can use my actual computer locally, that would be interesting. But first, let me just quickly tell you about the API endpoint so you know how you can go and actually use this. So for the, or in the API docs here, it tells you more about how this actually works on like a coding uh, level, but we have here the Python code example that you can just chuck into your app if you want to try and use this in here. Um, so, and then the model response that you get as well. So, you can come here, copy this code, and it gives you a starting point from how to actually use this. But anyway, if we want to try and see if this can use our actual computer, what could I try and get it to do? Open text edit and write a simple Python file. Open text edit write a simple Python file. Let me write this and then uh, we'll get back to you. No, I haven't tested it like this before, so let's see if it can actually do it or not. Because as computer use, it, it kind of confuses me, this whole computer slash browser use. Right, there we go. It's open straight to Google. Now, this might just be the, the way this computer use is architected in this Python file. Um, yeah, because it's trying to open a web browser. So let me see. If I just say yes, I wonder what it will try and do. If it will try and make text edit. No, nah, there we go. Yeah, it's gone. So... What does it say? Why can't it do it? What is this limitation? Um, safety service, blah, blah, blah. So the task is to do this. I'm currently in a web browser. I cannot directly do it. Tools available are blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it's called computer use, but it is browser use. But anyway, it is really cool that they're able to do this. Browser-based Gemini is the best place to go and actually use this and give it a try because it is completely free and you can actually experiment it, watch it, um, and then we can even, if we go here, whoops, I'm sure you can even try and find, uh, maybe not. Yeah, and it is really cool. Um, go and get started with it in the links in the description. What do you think? Is this, you know, the the next big thing? Uh, or are Gemini kind of late to the party for browser use? Let me know what you think in the description below. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.